you're a liar and you're a coward. Those are not good traits. He was a weak, pathetic charlatan. Completely. But do you understand why voters don't trust a bleeding word that politicians say unless they think they're off mic and they're swearing? The US expansion to the M25 from today and a £12.50 charge is leading the news for many people. Sadiq Khan, the London Mayor, says, well, it's been a difficult decision to expand it, but this is about saving lives. Sadiq Khan, that's a big, fat lie. If it was about saving lives and pollution, why charge a fine? Why not just say those cars are banned? But it's all right for them to come in if they pay money. You know that when you make these claims about lives lost, it's a lie. You know that it's not about actually saving lives or improving people's lives. It's about making money. The trouble is, you won't go on any radio or TV shows where people actually challenge you on the lies that you spout because you're not just a liar, Sadiq Khan. You're also a coward. You'll come up and talk to me at a social gathering, won't you? You'll come up and complain to me about my tweets, but you won't come on my show and answer any questions. You're a liar and you're a coward. Those are not good traits in a man who is the mayor of what is, let's face it, the greatest city on earth. This is a decision of the Labour mayor. Uh, it's being done for raising money and putting in place infrastructure for future road user charging and the government doesn't support it. OK, you said just earlier that this was about, you know, making driving the preserve of the rich and that Sadiq Khan, and he denies this, but it's on his Transport for London website, which he's in charge, uh, are looking at a pay-per-mile plan. Um, it's a bit strange for the government to be critical of that, but your government's been looking at this as well. No, we're, we're not in favour of, of doing that at all. I want people to be able to drive uh, and to be mobile. What we're looking at doing to deal with our climate change obligations in the future is about making sure we can get zero emission vehicles, but it's about people continuing to be able to be mobile. I know how important cars are for many people across the country, constituency like mine, you need a car to get about. We want people to be able to be mobile and continue having the freedom no, but, but, no, but, to do. With all due respect, Mr Arbor, wanting people to be mobile is lovely. We all want that. But, but it is a matter of fact that the Department for Transport has repeatedly looked at road pricing paper mile schemes as an option. You are looking at a policy. You are you are the front, you know, the face of a no. policy. But in 2030, we will see uh, the ban on the sale of new petrol, diesel and hybrid cars. That's what your government has elected on your manifesto. That's what you're still pledged to do. That's what I've, I asked the, the now Prime Minister at the hustings of the year about that. He's still pledged to do that. That will make buying a car and running a vehicle more expensive for most people. It will price many people off the roads. So to say you want, you, you think that the, the, the London Mayor is wrong to make driving the preserve of the rich, you're doing exactly the same thing. The allegation is that uh, Boris Johnson had friends and family visiting his uh, official country residence in Chequers during the COVID pandemic, uh, by the way, as early as uh, as June 2020. So in the very first uh, lockdown, uh, when many people who perhaps later were a little bit more relaxed about the rules, uh, certainly were still obeying the rules. I'm so fed up of this. The amount of Tories I hear saying this, defending Boris Johnson on the basis that, oh, well, you know, but he was pushed into this by, you know, by, by uh, um, uh, witty and valance and and, and and Matt Hancock and I mean you know he was the sodding prime minister it was his sodding decision and he chose to lock us down ruin people's lives ruin the economy ruin children's education stop families from seeing each other when they were dying people weren't able to get married people weren't able to have children because they weren't allowed to see each other because they weren't living in the same home as each other even though they'd been dating for two years and people weren't allowed to travel and see family over abroad when they were dying what he did was evil I will never forgive him. I will never forget. And the idea that he was all pushed into it, no. He was a weak, pathetic charlatan who did the country wrong just because everyone else was doing it in other parts of the world. What isn't good enough for me? I'm, I'm never, ever, ever going to forgive this. I, I, I think what he did was criminal. I think what the entire government did was criminal. And when people say, oh, we can all move on from this, or look, he, we, oh, to, oh, to his credit, he wasn't such a lockdown fanatic as was Matt Hancock. That's just not 
good enough in a democracy. It's not good enough. The government's announced though to make it easier to sack rogue police officers, not just rogue, even criminal police officers who committed heinous crimes like the likes of uh, Wayne Cousins and David Carrick, rape, murder, um, when they're found to have committed crimes or gross misconduct to automatically, on the spot, be sacked. This is something the Met Chief Sir Mark Rowley had asked for. Um, why was this not already the case? Well, look, I mean, when I became police minister just a few months ago, a number of people, including Mark Rowley, the Met Commissioner, asked for these rules to be tightened up to make it faster and easier to remove people who shouldn't wear the uniform or carry the badge. That small minority who don't deserve to carry the badge um, need to be quickly removed, and that's what today's reforms but, will ensure. Vidkin, what I don't understand is, you know, you talk about Wayne Cousins. Sarah Everard was killed in 2021. Within months, Wayne Cousins had pleaded guilty um, uh, to, to her, uh, her murder. Uh, he was sentenced July 2021. It's now August 2023. What's taken so long? Yeah, well, I've, I've been in post a matter of a few months, and you know, on my first day. So did, I, did your predecessor not think changes. it was worth doing? We've. we've well, look, I mean, look, I can only speak for myself, OK? I was, you know, asked to do this by Mark Rowley and others. Louise Casey wrote that report, made similar points, and we've taken action. I don't recall, since 2010, um, I don't recall at any point Labour saying in Parliament in questions or raising it with the media, look, we've got a whole load of schools that we didn't get round to replacing this terribly dangerous rack, this reinforced, autocarated concrete. School buildings are at danger of collapse. Could you point me to a press release saying that? Because yes, I don't think there I is can. one. Can on I? The, can you? On the, on the 26th of May this year, we had this an opposition day debate year. which referred to the rack. Before that, Bridget Phillips and our Shadow Education Secretary has asked over 150 questions on the topic of school safety, including the rack. Now, that's gone on Since for months when? and months and months. And months, every it's gone on for months. months. First, first, recording, Absolutely months. first recording of this I can find in, the, in the British in media is from yeah. July last year, uh, Thangham. Look, you, you're saying media. Labour knew that's about the this, they warned about this, and nothing was done, and it's all Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson and everyone else. And, because and, it is. But, because, no, but, but, in, because in 2018... But you've never raised it. You never raised it. We have. Yes, Not until we have last in 2018, year. The gov no, that the government knew in 2018 that a con Your, that the, the Labour government in knew in, in 1997. In we were and we had the building schools for the future programme to try and remedy it. That wasn't why you were building schools for schools, because a load of schools need... I was covering yes, everything it's that Tony Blair knew. was saying. We I don't remember rat ever being mentioned. Apart. Well, OK, we're going to have to agree to disagree on this OK, I'm Let me... I appreciate you don't remember it. No, I, no, I've got a very good memory, and I've checked the cuttings in the newspapers. They don't exist, though, because it wasn't talked about. Let me ask you about something that does exist today. We were um, in government. We talked about it in government. We talked about it. Our schools, you our didn't talk about, of state, you didn't say, secretaries of state, talked about building schools for yes, the future. Yes, of course you did, but you didn't say, because we've got a whole load of schools that have been built with this concrete that's like an aero bar, and it's going to collapse, and all of our kids well, are going to die in collapsing classrooms. We could have... That never came up. Well, I am... It was the most important issue, but it never certain. came up. What percentage of our energy in this country is being produced on an average day from wind and solar power, from renewable energy? I, I, I don't Give know the that, but if you... No, oh, no, no, no you're, come on, you're cans, a front bench spokesman. You want to be in the Cabinet in a year's time. Roughly, what percentage? <laughs> It's not a pub quiz, and I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that question. But if you okay, if I asked you, if I asked you, is it in the region of, is it party, in the region of ten percent, twenty percent, fifty percent, eighty percent? Any, you can't, you can't be a front bench spokesman or want much to be in the cabinet. Much less than France. Much less than France. Much less than than France. Do you not think it would be a good idea? that a front bench spokesman for the Labour Party who wants to be in the Cabinet would be... If you were there was an election tomorrow, you would be in the Cabinet of this country getting to decide how our country is run, future energy policy, and, all, and having a vote in that, in that Cabinet that you don't know. You're saying that renewable energy is the future, but you don't know how much of our energy is currently produced from renewable sources. Do you not think that's a bit of a worry? I know from looking across... I'm, I'm not. I'm not a walking Wikipedia, but I, I do know from that, looking but across a rough the channel. Idea. I know that from looking across the channel that in France they have more control of their own energy they have and they have power lower stations. bills as a result of it, and they have better jobs uh, mm. in the energy sector. Good, secure. I want us to have lower energy bills. I want us to have secure c control yeah. of our own supplies, and I want us to have and, those good jobs. Okay, Why and can I clarify? Do, do you believe we can do that with renewable energy? Do you believe we can do that with renewable energy? 
we have to do it with new renewable energy because in the end fossil fuels are going to run out. This is the question that I'm asking. What is a woman? It's a question that Piers Morgan put to Sadiq Khan on his show last night. And this is what Sadiq Khan had to say. Well, I asked that question knowing full well that people may be watching this who may have gender dysphor dysphoria and, and may, you know, have concerns in relation to this issue. So let me be quite direct in relation to this. So uh, a woman, uh, when it comes to biology and sex, is an adult girl. But there are some women who may have gender dys dysphoria and, you know, trans women can also be women as well. I just don't even know where to start with this. Um, a woman is an adult girl. That's what we're now, an adult girl. OK, well, what's a girl? Should have been the follow-up. But he also says, you know, trans women can also be women as well. I mean, trans woman is, is, is a man. Biologically, a man is what a trans woman is. That's what the trans bit is about. I, I completely understand that people mm. aren't able to pay their bills. You know, um, waiting you know two years for an operation mm. um, and worrying about another boatload of, of fighting age men arriving and, and booking into the next you know the the hotel at the end of the street mm. is far more important. People's day to day lives and their schools crumbling. I completely accept that. Yeah. But I do think that there are there are tests of character and yeah. tests of honesty that that voters do actually put to politicians about what well, you know do they like the cut of their jib and i think a whole bunch of men and even more deploringly women mm. on the labor benches i mean and i'm clearly saying andy this who otherwise i like a lot who don't know what a woman is or claim not to know what women is that is a really damning indictment isn't it not? it is but i still don't think this issue has reached critical mass yet and i think you know, it's being spoken about a lot more and yeah. i think as more people are exposed to it they realize oh i'm not keen on this at all but i think it's going to take yeah you know, it's mad to say that it, you know you know, male prisoners saying that they're women and getting transferred, that hasn't really had the effect because I think most people just sort of put that to one side and say, yeah, well, they're criminals. It doesn't that matter to me. That brought down Nicola Sturgeon. It did in Scotland, but that's because Nicola Sturgeon, I think, was on a hiding to nothing anyway. That was just the thing, yeah. that the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Broadly speaking, in terms of a national government, I don't think it's going to happen until there's a bigger scandal. And it might be a similar sort of scandal in the UK. I suspect it'll be more to do with the child detransitioning. Yes. Oh, it is no, I think, I think we're just going to wait for a girl to get raped in Some, the school toilet. It'll be something... That's what we're going to do. We're going to wait for a girl to get raped by this, a boy who's this pretending is, he's a girl. Exactly. And this it will be something awful will happen that'll snap and everything yep. will go, oh, hang on, this isn't good. But sadly, and it is sad that we're going to have to get to that point, that hasn't quite happened yet, yeah. or at least not on the scale I'll tell you that what, I anticipate Every politician who's not on the right side of this... I will never forgive you, and I'm telling you the women of this country won't forgive you. Get on the right side and get on it now. Only 180 new schools were delivered in six years during Labour's Building Schools for the Futures programme, and already we've got 400 schools in progress uh, under the Conservative Schools Rebuilding programme. So, wait a minute, can I just double-check? Is this the same as the new hospitals as well, where actually it's just a refurbished wing and is being killed a new hospital? Or is it yeah. an actual whole new school? It was a car park and now it's a school. No, no, because I have a school in my patch, a Blenheim Primary School, which is going through this programme. So, so we, we... Is it a we, new school? Uh, was it a rebuilt school that already existed? The school is there. What, what so we it's need not a new school. No, but I didn't say it was a new school, uh, 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 Julia. What I'm saying is that You we, said at Labour, under eight, for eight years, 180 new schools were built. I mean... This is the thing. This is this is where us voters get fed up. You know, we under. If someone says I've got a new car, they don't mean I've changed the tyres on the car I've had for the last five years. If you've got a school which needs to be rebuilt, and you 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 say then you've refurbished a, a school, don't you, say you've built a new school. Look, what I'm saying. There are that. no new school places. It's a st there's, there was a school. There's now a refurbished school. That is not a new school. Well, the facilities are new, and that is what is important for our children. They do need to be in classrooms which are fit for purpose, and this government is committed but to... But it's not a new school. It's not okay. adding an extra school, is it? I, I, take, I, I take that point completely. But do you understand why voters don't trust a bleeding word that politicians say, unless they think they're off mic and they're swearing?